tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. What the actual f is happening? Street racers shut down a highway in Aurora. Police are taking names. Our community's angry and we want to find the ones responsible for this. The city wants to collect tags as well. Going after the driver has not been effective. We hope mom and dad know a good lawyer. Boulder police are releasing photos of the people involved in Saturday's party turned riot. Tips are coming in around the clock. The pictures and the videos that are coming into us are incredibly clear. Plus, a verdict is reached in the murder trial of Dante Lucas. I think Kelsey can finally rest. I'm not sure mama can. An insanity plea is made in the murder of a young woman killed while walking her dog. A highly contagious strain of the coronavirus detected in Colorado. Colorado lawmakers attempt to lower the cost of prescription drugs. We shouldn't have to, uh, you know, not buy a prescription or not get a prescription drug because we can't afford it. And Mike tracks the mother of all snowstorms. Boy, there's nothing quite like spending the night stuck on the highway because street racers have blocked off the road ahead. Good evening and thanks for watching Denver 7. I'm Andrew Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us tonight. Now, street racing in Aurora usually involves four or five cars, but what happened there Sunday night was more like the Grand Prix. And Aurora police want to know who was involved, while the mayor wants to know how police were caught off guard. And Denver 7's Gary Brode has our top story. Street racers taking over our roads. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed. Ziad Alibri was one of at least 600 cars at a complete standstill on I-225 between Colfax and Alameda. I see there is a smoke uh, start uh, to go up, uh, heavy smoke. An area with several hospitals nearby. That was a scary part for us is people trying to get to Children's Hospital and shoots. Right there, there's that cancer center. There's a medical center of Aurora just down the way. Right, You could cost that person their life. Sites like this have become all too familiar to the Aurora Police Department. It's very concerning, right? We're, we're angry, our community's angry, and we want to find the ones responsible for this. On Monday, Aurora Mayor Michael Kaufman tweeted criticism of his police department, writing in part, it takes a lot of social media chatter to pull off an event like this. I absolutely don't understand how our police department didn't know that this was going to happen. Officer Matthew Longshore says these posts on social media don't stay up long, and some of the posts are designed for the purpose of throwing police off their scent. It's required of the members to look at it, screenshot it, send it around that way, you know, because they don't want to leave these things publicized on social media. Like I think what we saw um, last night actually makes this even more important to uh, get moving um, on a quicker time frame. Aurora City Council member Francois Bergen has already been working on legislation for stricter penalties. Looking at a a proposal of an ordinance that would um, possibly seize the vehicle um, because going after the driver has not been effective. Bergen says it could take about three months before it could go into effect. Beginning of February, we actually started getting quite a few reports from members whose properties we're being impacted by the drag racing. Stephen Shepard works for Building Owners and Managers Association in the Denver Metro. He says not only is street racing dangerous, but several business owners are now losing thousands of dollars because of damages and security. So just one member, almost $40,000 worth of damage because of street racing. In Aurora, Gary Grove, Denver 7. Dante Lucas has been convicted of first degree murder in the 2013 death of Kelsey Schelling. The district attorney's office went through five pages of witnesses and spent weeks laying out their case. Lucas's attorneys did not call on a single witness and the jury reached a verdict in a matter of a few hours. So we're very, very thankful for, for this outcome. Um, but in the end, I didn't get Kelsey back and that's what I wanted more than anything. <laughs> so I feel like I didn't do something. I didn't push hard enough on something or I didn't look enough on something to, to bring her home. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have to live with that <laughs> the rest of my life. Kelsey Schelling's body has not been found. Lucas was sentenced on the spot to life in prison without parole. The man accused of shooting and killing a young woman because he didn't like how she was training her dog pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity today. So that means Michael Close will now receive a mental health evaluation before appearing in court again in May. 
Denver police say close shot 21 year old Isabella Thallus and her boyfriend Darian Simon as they just walked outside Close's home in the ballpark neighborhood. Simon survived. Thallus died at the scene. Denver police have identified two people involved in Friday's deadly hit and run in Morrison Road in West Kentucky. Police say a teenage boy hit a cyclist as he was crossing the street and investigators say the cyclist was then hit by another driver. Both drivers left the scene but had either been caught or had turned themselves in by the following day. CU Boulder students certainly didn't seem like they were concerned about any consequences Saturday. Not for themselves, certainly not for the people who might get sick as a result of their actions. And if they weren't sweating it then, they'll may, may be tonight because Boulder police tell us they have received more than 700 tips in the last two days. And better yet, they have photos that they will soon release. And Denver 7 has obtained video of a now former Denver Sheriff's deputy roaring down I-25 while transporting inmates. The DA's office says James Grimes was driving 40 miles over the speed limit. He pleaded guilty to reckless driving and official misconduct and to avoid jail. He has agreed to permanently give up his career in law enforcement. Boulder isn't the only place where people are breaking the rules. Eight Denver businesses were cited for COVID safety violations last week. Seven were ticketed because people weren't wearing masks. An eighth, Maricela's nightclub was hit for being well over capacity and because of a total lack of social distancing. And the city said today that businesses like Hobby Lobby and Spanky's Roadhouse have challenged recent citations in court and their cases failed. Well, it took some arm twisting by the attorney general's office, but a Wheat Ridge based travel company has agreed to refund 400 Coloradans for canceled trips. Voyagers International put together European tours for high school students and their families. The AG's office says the company provided refunds when trips were canceled by the pandemic, but then kept a $1,900 cancellation fee. Anyone who signed up for an extended trip charged an extra $760. We called Voyagers today for comment. No one picked up. Three cases of the so-called South Africa variant have been detected in Colorado. Two are staff at Buena Vista Correctional. The third is an inmate. And the state health department says it was at the prison today to ramp up testing and is now offering the vaccine to employees and inmates and close contacts. The South Africa variant is considered more contagious than the strain of COVID that we've grown so accustomed to over the last year. It is also proven more resistant to vaccines. And variant concerns aside, the CDC says people who have received their shots should feel free to mingle with their unvaccinated family members. In other words, you can finally hug grandma again. CDC also says fully vaccinated people can spend time indoors together. Exposed to the coronavirus? Well, unless you're showing symptoms, there is now no need to quarantine or even be tested. And Wyoming will lift restrictions on businesses and end its mask mandate on March 16th. An exception will be made for schools and since there is no vaccine currently available for kids, masks will continue to be a requirement in, in grades K through 12. Around 20% of Wyoming's thin population has received at least one dose of the vaccine. The district attorney in Arapahoe and Douglas counties is pushing for court employees to be vaccinated. 18th Judicial DA John Kellner says the backlog now 14,000 cases deep and that the delays are unfair to both victims and suspects. 40% of those cases, of those trials, are murder cases. They're class two felonies, class three felonies, sexual assault cases on children. So some of the most impactful cases that we deal with in the justice system, and they're for people that have been waiting, of course, for justice for a long time. Defendants um, are innocent until proven guilty, and they've been waiting for their day in court oftentimes because they want to actually have that due process. They want to have the court system. Same thing for us as prosecutors. And we want to have a fair system where people can have their cases adjudicated. Tri-County Health says it's still trying to get clarification on when court employees can get their shots. Colorado lawmakers are again trying to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez shows us how. It doesn't take a pharmacist to tell you. Drug prices are out of control. There's not a day that goes by that pharmacists don't see patients make decisions on not getting drugs. Year after year in the U.S., prescription drug prices are going up. There's nothing to discourage that kind of behavior from drug companies. And for years, state lawmakers have been trying to curb the costs. In 2019, they passed a bill to have Colorado look into importing medications from Canada, one of the first states to do so. It's a policy then President Trump supported, but now the Biden administration needs to review. But there's also been pushback from Canada. We are 
taking into account the fact that, you know, Canada is a tenth of the size of the United States, and they were very worried about uh, us, you know, getting most of their drugs. So now Colorado lawmakers are considering a bill to expand that program to other countries. We're expanding to countries like Japan, like Australia and France. Bill co-sponsor Senator Joe Anginal says it could lead to even more savings since some prescriptions are cheaper in Australia than Canada. This will allow people to better afford the drugs that they need to take for their quality of life and to live a healthy life. But opponents argue this isn't the solution to the U.S.'s drug price problem. They're probably not going to be any happier than the Canadians were with this idea that we're going to drain their supply uh, to try and address our own systemic problems. Pharmacist Kai Davis believes something needs to be done to help lower drug costs like importing. Their main concern? We've got to have that, that confidence that the medications are are safe, effective, and are what they say they are. While lawmakers consider expanding the import program, we're just sick and tired of being ripped off on this. The governor and a group of Democrat lawmakers unveiled a bill Monday to create a prescription drug affordability board to research drug costs and set guardrails. The board would also investigate and review when drug companies sharply increase the cost of a specific drug. Eventually, these bills might save people money. First, they have to face state lawmakers. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. It's the warm before the storm. I'll let you know when we could see feet of snow. And neighbors complain about a landscaping project they didn't sign off on. It's going to look like a war zone. One side of the street will have trees. The other side of the street will have no trees. 